Hi, this is Tea with a Druid 127, brought to you by the Order of Bards, Elvates and Druids. And uh, it's lovely to see you here. And uh, welcome if you're watching this live, either on YouTube or on Facebook. And uh, welcome to if you're happening to watch this uh, in it's in a recording showing later. Um, I can see everybody piling in from New York and California and Italy and Wyoming and Poland, uh, Orkney. That's fantastic. And Michigan and the Rocky Mountains. How wonderful. That's that's one of the uh, lovely features of this medium is that we can feel that we're together from all over the world. And Johannesburg, I see. That's that's really great. Skegness and Canada and uh, Norway and uh, Virginia. Great. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, last week, I talked about how, uh, or, or rather, I answered the question as to why one would want to use Druidry to get closer to nature. More and more people want to get closer to nature. They realize how important that is. And a lot of people are turning to Druidry now and to nature spiritualities. And but the question, it's a very legitimate question to ask, well, why do I need to do that? Why can't I just um, spend more time outside and get to know about nature and work for conservation and so on and so on? And what I suggested was that, of course, you can do that, but that what Druidry does is it weaves into that interest in nature, that love of nature, that wanting to be closer to nature, with our cultural selves and our spiritual selves, if you like, so that combined with this getting back in touch with nature, uh, we are working at the artistic creative level, the bardic stream of Druidry, and at the, uh, the ritual or spiritual level as well. Sometimes it's helpful to see that in terms of the different kinds of the self the singer shaman and sage is one way you can look at it singer meaning in its widest sense not necessarily a physical song but the part of you of your soul that wants to sing whether that's singing in music in cooking in other words the creative self the artistic self so that's the bardic tradition uh, that's the cultural aspect if you like of druidry and then there's the shaman uh, out in nature, tuning into the powers of the the trees and the stones, the forests and the and the, and, uh, the rivers and the sea, uh, and the ancestors, and the spirits. So that's the shaman and uh, the sage, the druid, uh, the person who is seeking wisdom, that is understanding life as a spiritual quest and wanting to be able to express uh, the wisest thoughts and uh, gaining illumination of some kind. So um, so these are the these are the uh, the three aspects that I talked about last week. And now I'd like to look at another reason why uh, the dru why druidry can be helpful in, in getting in touch with nature. And um, Somebody is asking, is this live on YouTube as well? Yes, it is. It's live on the OBOD, Order of Bards, Obates and Druids uh, uh, YouTube and on my YouTube, Philip Cargon. You can find it on either of those live, Bella Improviso. So, um, yes, th so here's another way that I think Druidry can help, which is when we think of getting in touch with nature, it's easy to think in terms of space. We go out there into the space of nature, the landscape of nature. And of course, that's hugely important. And uh, there's a lot of uh, material in Druidry around that, about sacred space and about uh, ley lines and earth energies and all that sort of thing. But there's also the temporal aspect. The aspect of time is that it's well known that the Druids work with these eight festivals, as other pagans do and other nature spiritualities do. Uh, so we have in Druidry, we have these eight festivals. We celebrate them. So this means about every six weeks, we tune in, we, we dedicate some time to tune in to this moment in the turning of the year. Now, this is really important, I think, because one of the ways our society works 
is it's predicated on constantly projecting us forward into concern about the future. The next time you listen to some news, uh, analyze how much is speculation about, about what is going to happen. What's going to happen in November with the elections in the States? Uh, is Mr. Cummings going to resign? Is is this going to happen? And then we have different people expressing different opinions and then experts are brought on. Of course, with the pandemic, that's huge. Like experts are brought on to discuss whether or not this might happen. What are we going to do after lockdown? So strangely, it's not news. My understanding of news is this has happened. There's just been an earthquake here. Uh, you know, there's news. They've uh, produced an electric car that goes for a thousand miles or something. Uh, that's news. Something has happened. Uh, but so much of it is speculation about what may or may not happen in, in the future. And what Drudry offers is this template of about every six weeks a festival. And you can say in one way is that it offers, it invites us to look towards a closer horizon. Instead of a generalized anxiety about what's going to happen in the future. We are invited to contemplate the fact that we're moving towards the next festival. So let's take now, for instance, May the 25th. So we're moving from Beltane uh, to Albanhefin, the, the summer solstice. And we're about halfway through that movement. We've got about, uh, well, we've a little less than halfway. So we've got about four weeks, three and three and a half weeks or something to go for the summer solstice. So, so our time frame is this is what we're working with. We're tuning into this delicious time of year in the Northern Hemisphere of moving from spring into summer. And then in the Southern Hemisphere, I don't know if we've got anybody from the Southern Hemisphere here, uh, but in the Southern Hemisphere, we are uh, working towards the um, winter solstice, this fascinating time between Samhain and Auburn Arthan, the winter solstice. And so um, Angelique is asking, will our board members have an opportunity to attend festivals in person, like midsummer or next year? Ah, you're asking me, you see, to go beyond this horizon, to speculate in the way that in a news program would, would say, well, experts think that probably by then uh, the epidemic will be over and so on. I would hope so. I would imagine that by next summer solstice we can, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, but what we can know is that we're moving towards the summer solstice. So it invites us to slow down and to get in touch with the rhythms of the cosmos, this beautiful rhythm of the cosmos. So time as a doorway to get in touch with nature. Changing our relationship with time changes our relationship with nature. Ben in St. Lucia says that they're waiting for the rainy season in the tropics. That's, that's Ben's horizon that's coming up for him. So it's not something we perhaps generally think about, that time is a gateway or the contemplation of time provides us with a gateway into a deeper appreciation of nature. But I think you, you can get a feel for this when, you know, those wonderful film, slow motion films of plants growing. Uh, or maybe it's not slow motion, it's the opposite, it's speeded up. And you see, but you see a plant as if it's growing in slow motion, but quickly. And you see the little, the little shoot breaking through the soil in a very determined way and then, and then uh, coming out. Um, then, then we start to sense uh, the, uh, the power of time. Or well, there's wonderful wildlife uh, television programs where you see the seasons and the way animal behavior changes with the seasons. So, so there, so that's another, another way. Um, and yes, and Kathy was saying, she's, she was visiting a moment ago, the young plants in her garden, future food, but exciting and beautiful now. That's exactly it, isn't it? You you look at these little little um, 
you know, lettuces in the ground or whatever you're looking at. And you know that in, you know, six weeks, eight weeks or whatever, you know, you'll have, you'll have a lettuce, you know, like this that you'll be able to eat. But it's beautiful to, uh, to be in time, in the now, at the moment. And one of the things that the lockdown has done is it has altered, I believe, our relationship to time. People are saying things like, you know, um, you know, I, I, you know, the days flow by and I can't judge time in the same way. It's altering people's perceptions of time. And in fact, what it's offering us by its very uncertainty, here's a turnaround, by the very uncertainty in our current situation, our attempts to plan or to second guess what's going to happen are, are doomed to failure. It's like, we don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. What, where, where will we be able to travel abroad um, next month? I don't know. Will we be able to? You know. so, so it forces us into a strange place that if we accept it, uh, it's rather interesting because it stops us from constantly thinking beyond the moment. So we're, we're, we're actually offered the gift of sinking into the now. And you know from a very simple uh, point of view, uh, psychological point of view, the fact that we look forward so much can exacerbate our anxiety. Because when you think what anxiety is, anxiety is concern about what's going to happen. I'm really anxious about the situation because I don't know what's going to happen, or I fear the worst, or I, I'm worried about a future state or a future event. And depression is more complex, of course, but, but, the, but there's a way in which ruminating on the past, going back in one's mind and churning the past like that is exacerbates depression and uh, feelings of, of, of uh, sadness and gloom. So um, let's, let's enter into, into the now, in the natural world now. Um, and I'll invite you to close your eyes if you want to. Um, but you don't have to. And let's just have a meditation together. And let's just, as we close our eyes, in these few moments of silence now, let's just tune into the fact that there are people all over the world who are doing exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. We're all tuning in in this same area of consciousness, this field that we're connected to. Magical moments in which we find ourselves coming into a clearing in the forest, a sacred grove of the Druids. And if it feels okay for you, just find a really comf comfortable spot in this clearing in the forest. The ground is very welcoming. It's, there's some moss and some grass and some sandy dry soil. So it's really okay to sit down anywhere you like. You might like to sit close to a tree, a tree behind you. And just take a few moments to feel the fact that you're seated on the earth. And you feel the grounding presence of the earth and the healing energy of the earth. And as you breathe deeply in, hold for a moment and then breathe out fully. You just allow any tensions or anxieties just to drop away into the earth. And as you breathe in, you can feel the energy of the earth flowing up into your body, up into your energy field. And you breathe out and relax into being present in the sacred grove. And you breathe in the energy of the earth, the healing energy of the earth.
and you sense the trees, the birds singing in the trees, the branches and the leaves. And you sense the way the trees are anchored so wonderfully in the earth, their roots stretching down deeply into the earth. These trees are so powerful and yet so peaceful at the same time. And you breathe in the energy of the trees. You sense their healing protection. And then you become aware of the sky above you. And you breathe in the air of the sky. And as you breathe in the energy of the sky, you feel that energy flowing down into your being, bringing you vitality and strength. And the energy of the sky meets the energy of the earth within the center of your being. And now I'm going to invite you, if you wish, to just place your ear against the ground. You'll find that there's a lovely, soft, mossy little bit of the ground there near the base of the tree. And you kind of curl up and just place one ear against the ground. And in this altered state that you're in, you're able to tune in to different frequencies. And so now you can hear all the activity that is going on on this part of the earth. You can hear the sap being drawn from the roots of the tree up its trunk. You can hear the movement of all the creatures in the soil. Sweet, delicate movements of creatures moving in the soil. Little swishing noises of worms as they burrow through the soil. And then you realize that you can pick up the vibrations from animals who are walking nearby in the forest. And through your other ear, you can hear the sounds of the birds. And so knowing that you can do this exercise any time you like, that you can return to this place, you gradually allow yourself to sit up. And you put both your palms on the earth and you send your love to the earth, saying a blessing on the land, a blessing on all life. And then you bring your palms to your heart and you feel the warmth in your heart. And then you gradually allow your awareness of being seated in the sacred grove to fade as you become aware of being fully present here and now in front of your computer or your tablet or your phone. So I hope you uh, enjoyed that meditation. Um, 
if you'd like longer meditations, I, I do a program where I do a, a long meditation, uh, one a week, uh, which is not live, but is recorded. So you can listen to it at any time. And um, it's it's a program that's going to go on for another two more weeks, but but all the recordings remain there. So you have 12, 12 weeks of, of, of meditations. And I will give you the uh, the URL for that. And uh, you're very welcome to join that uh, and uh, listen to the meditations. It's a very particular kind of meditation where you you um, you lie down to listen to them. So you can really go deep. You can completely let go and uh, go deep. So I've uh, I've pasted that URL up. So have a... Julia Foyle heard the bird song in the background. I wondered whether you could hear that. It's just coming through the open window. Um, and uh, they make a tremendous racket in the morning. About 4.35 in the morning, it's almost impossible to carry on sleeping because, you know, we sleep just along here. And, and, and so the trees are just by the window. And we have wood pigeons and thrushes and uh, all sorts of birds singing robins. Uh, so have a lovely evening. It's been lovely to be with you and um, have a wonderful week and many, many blessings and much love and see you uh, next week. And then the week after that, I'm on the 6th of June. I'm handing my role as chief of the order over to Ema and uh, I'll still carry on doing teas, but I'll, I'll have some time off. I'm thinking at the moment I'll probably have uh, a month, two months break where I won't, I'll try not to go onto the internet at all, have a break from that and just have a uh, go in and go deep. Uh, um, and then, but then I'll be back. So um, one more, one more tea with the Druid and, uh, and then Ema will take over and other guests will take over too. So lovely to be with you and au revoir and see you next week. Bye. <laughs>